no Nintendo library would be complete without an entry from our favourite Tokyo-hating reptile. Godzilla is a strange example of a game that was released in North America slightly before Japan. You might be thinking that this is a port of the NES Monster of Monsters game, but you'd be wrong, even though the same developers and publishers were involved. Whereas the NES game was a side-scrolling action game, this is basically nothing like that. Don't ask me what Godzilla has to do with anything here, it's clearly another one of those tacked-on mascot deals that makes little sense. Anyway, you play this dinosaur that looks like Barney with a massive Popeye-esque fist who has to manoeuvre various rooms while punching boulders, rampage style. There are a ton of enemies coming after you which constantly fall out of this lemming hole thing. You score points for punching them out or dropping a boulder on them, but it's not a requirement to get rid of them all or anything. The idea of each stage is to crack through all the boulders. Do that and these blocks with arrows on them appear pointing in one of the four cardinal directions. These take you to another screen in the particular direction of the arrow, which gives the game its shtick. It's not just individual puzzles you need to navigate, but a quite non-linear maze that will no doubt lead you to plenty of backtracking through previously beaten rooms. The maze is eight scenes across by eight deep, and the aim of the whole deal is to get to a particular room somewhere deep in the labyrinth. It's not the bottom right you're aiming for either, just as a hint. It's somewhere in the middle. Believe me, if you're not mapping this out, you're going to be stuck in here for ages. It's not a one-hit KO game. You have a health bar, but no invulnerability frames upon hit, so this can drop alarmingly quickly. A lot of enemies die in one punch, and the hit detection is very generous, so I wouldn't say it's unfair, really, but you definitely need to keep moving. The music makes absolutely no sense for this to be a Godzilla title. It's upbeat and chirpy, like your quintessential Japanese platform puzzle game. Well, let me rephrase that then. The music fits the game, but the Godzilla gimmick really doesn't. That flying enemy is supposed to be Rodan, I don't know. Let the opening credits run for some gorgeous looking pictures of the monsters alongside their cartoonish representations, if you care. But honestly, this game feels like it should have had Alex Kidd as its mascot instead. It's weird because the western version of the intro screen looks and sounds exactly how you'd imagine a Godzilla game would, but then the game starts and you're left scratching your head. At least in the Japanese version the character looks as cartoony at the start as he does in-game. The gameplay elements are nothing new, but I like the fact that it's non-linear and you'll probably need to map it out a little. The music is chirpy, but actually very good, although some of the in-game sound effects are a bit too... Atari. Godzilla is a tough old sausage, that's for sure. There are a few screens with a cheap death or two until you learn them, and you can easily get stuck if you don't plan out your method. Don't worry that you'll have to play through in one sitting, though. There are two different passwords. A four-character one that allows you to start from whatever level you're currently on, and an 18-character one that also retains your score and lives. Strange to see two different save passwords, but a nice idea. It's a cool little title that has a lot of joy within it, but is as confusing as it is amusing.